guys, Samantha from Jessie Matt Tutorials here and today I am going to be doing a review on Primo Sculpey. So I will start with the upsides to Primo first and then I'll go into the more troublesome areas of this clay. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is Primo's vast array of colours. The range includes almost any colour you could think of and there are a whole bunch of bonus effects that you can get from opal to glitters to even glow in the darks. So it's a really cool bunch of colours. So I'll just bring over some to show you. I'm not going to read out the colours because that would take too long. But I'll just show you how many there are. Now what I'm showing you here are the ones that don't have effects and I'll go into the effects in a little while. But these are just the ones that don't have the micas or the glow in the dark or the glitters. So I don't have all of the colours, but you can see that there are a whole bunch. So it really is quite, it has quite a vast array of colours. So that's just the ones I have at the moment. There are quite a few more. So you can see it, it has a lot of colours. Now another thing that I found is that especially with the one the primo colours that don't have effects, there's almost no colour shift between the raw and baked clay, provided that you do prevent it from scorching. So all of these colours pretty much stay the exact same colour when you bake them. Let's move those out of the way. Now another thing that I really like about it is that it's a great all-around clay. So here are some beads that I made use using Prima. And if I show you this one, you can see that I've done some Skinner blends, but I've also done some canes. So Prima works really well for the more simple canes. The more complex canes, um, it doesn't do so well. I'll talk more about that later, but for the simple canes, it works really well. For the mixed media, it works well. For Mukumegane, so any technique that you can think of, it works pretty well with it. So. Um, it also works really well in cold climates, so I'll just bring over a piece over here, and this is Peacock Pearl. And so it's not hot here, but it's not cold, but I'll just show you how nice and soft this is. And it's this is round about how soft it's going to be in winter. It might be a little bit firmer, and this is a nice fresh block, so you can see that it's nice and soft in it squishes up really easily and this is not conditioned so it's a great clay for if you are in a cold climate where other brands can be quite hard another thing is that it's quite strong so you can decorate vases and cutlery with it so if you're making delicate pieces or things that are going to have a lot of wear and tear it's a very good clay for that it also has some really good translucence. So here's some five stones that I have done using Primo Translucent. And that's just one of the things that works really well for the Primo Translucence. Now, one thing that I do want to mention is that there are two types of Primo Translucent. The first one is just plain Primo Translucent. And then there's another one called Primo White Translucent. And the difference between the two is that the Primo Translucent, when baked, has a slightly orange hue and the Primo White Translucent, when baked, has a slightly blue hue. So it can affect your projects. I do have an article on all of the translucents and I'll provide a link in the links below. And I also have an article on Primo. I have two articles on Primo, so I'll provide a link to those as well. So I really like the translucents because they're quite clear. And just another thing that I want to mention, it might seem a little bit odd, but um, for those of you that are quite sensitive to the clay when it's just come out the packet and it hasn't aired, if you're sensitive to the smell, I wouldn't worry about Prima because I found that it doesn't have as strong a smell as some of the other brands like Kato. So if you're sensitive to smells, um, that's something you don't have to worry about. Okay. So those are all the good things. Now I just want to bring over the effects. And you can see that we have quite a few here. And I, I don't have all of them. So you get a lot more than this. Just bring them over. 
and there are a few different types of effects there are the what I have here is I have the translucent I have um, almost the stone effect so this is an opal and this is a granite you get the typical mica clays and then you also get glitters like this one so I just want to talk about those for a second so translucents I've talked about already um, I want to just talk about the stone effects so a lot of the time with the stone effects they have inclusions in them and so they have these little particles in them like the opal this has dichroic pieces in it now although that's really good for creating the cool stone effect you just need to be careful when you are rolling these through your pasta machine because the effects can accidentally scratch your pasta machine so just be aware of that when you're working with these clays and I just want to show you the glitters and it's just like the name says it's basically a color of clay with glitter in it so here's a copper mica clay and it's very similar to this one so it's base almost the exact same as this one except that this one's got silver glitter in it so that's pretty cool you've got to be careful of the glitter though it can scratch your pasta machine if you're not careful now just want to go and talk about the mica clays there are two different types here there are the metallic ones like these which I'll bring over so this is antique gold that's 18 karat gold antique gold bronze gold and copper and then you have the other type which is the more colored clay so this is magenta uh, bright green, green pearl and purple pearl and these ones are colored now when you first work with them you might not see the difference but when you do see the difference it will be in your mica shifts so the colored versions I found have less mica particles than the metallic versions so I'll just bring over so here's the metallic version of the clay which is gold and you can see how striking that mica shift is it's really 3D and it's got a lot of depth to it then I'll bring over one of the more uh, one of the coloured clays and you can see it, you do still get a mica shift from it but the mica shift just isn't as deep as the metallic ones and that's because the coloured ones don't have as much of the mica particles as the metallic ones so just wanted to point that out now I do want to talk about a few things on mixing using Prima in most polymer clay brands they have pure primary colors like Kato here so you can see it is a pure blue a pure red and a pure yellow Primo unfortunately doesn't have this all of their colors contain two or more of the primary colors so you can see here that in general you'll have two of each of the primary colors so this can make color mixing hard as you don't want to mix the three primary colors together as that would make a muddy color it can be hard to tell which colors contain which primary colors sometimes and this means color mixing can be hard I'll explain this more in a later article as there's a lot of information to explain so all in all I say Primo is best used straight out the packet which is fine as Primo carries a lot of colors so that can be a good or a bad but personally I don't find any problems with it as I just like to use it straight out the packet now another problem that I have is that the colors um, continually get discontinued which means that when you make color recipes sometimes if that color gets discontinued then it means that you're going to have to go and recreate that color um, another thing is that Primo can be quite expensive depending on where you're buying it um, in America it's probably not that expensive but where I live in Australia it's cheaper to buy Kato than it is to buy Prima so depending on where you live this clay can be fairly expensive now another thing I wanted to talk about was its consistency so while Primo is really nice in cold weather and I love using it in winter it is really hard to use in warm weather because it gets sticky and gooey and isn't very easy to use and so I like to use Kato in warm weather um, it's also when it gets warm it can be quite sticky and so it picks up dirt really easily when it's warm but then again I don't really like to use it when it's warm 
Now another problem with that consistency is when it's warm it will tend to do this on your pasta machine. If it's cold it won't do it, it'll be nice and firm and it won't do it. But if you're li living in warmer temperatures and you're trying to work with Primo in the warm temperatures you're going to find quite a few problems. And another problem that I found, which is again because of the consistency of Primo, is that it can be hard to create complex canes with it. And this is because the um, clay is fairly soft and so when you're working with the cane you're smooshing it all over the place and you're working with it for a long time and so your hands make the clay warm. And so if you're using a firm brand like Kato, the clay will get soft but it won't get too soft. With Prima, I find that it gets too soft when creating canes. So I don't really recommend this clay for canes. But then again, that's just really down to the consistency. So if you're living in a cold climate, I highly recommend this clay because it works really well in the cold climates. But if you live in a warm climate, um, I don't really recommend it for all of your clay projects. So if you're living in a warm climate, I wouldn't recommend it for your canes, but it works for other techniques. So anyway, that's what I thought about K about Primo. I really like it. It's one of my favourite clays next to Kato. The two of them I use together because I like to use Primo in winter because it's nice and easy to work with because it gets quite cold here in winter. But I like to use Kato in, in summer because the Primo gets a little bit too soft. So I like using those two brands together and I find that if I use those two brands I can create whatever I want. So anyway, my verdict on Primo is that it's definitely a great clay. I love it and I would highly recommend it. So I do hope that that review was helpful to you. If it was, please do let me know as that's always helpful. And as always, I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.